Alright, so we wish everyone could visit us here and play with the toys, but we know they can't. So we're going to do just a, a five minute overview of a bunch of materials we've created here. We're going to start on this end of the table with some tried and true models. These are sort of the flag shut models that we started. Um, and then we're going to work our way toward that end of the table where we'll be looking at some projects that are still very much under development. So in the beginning, uh, there's the water kit that lots of people know about. It teaches the polar nature of water. Uh, we have a sodium chloride lattice. We can dissolve salt in water. Uh, we cannot dissolve a hydrocarbon uh, like ethane until we convert ethane to ethanol by replacing a hydrogen with a hydroxyl group. So with this kit we can establish some basic principles of chemistry that we're then going to apply to protein. Okay, the principles of chemistry established here get applied to the amino acid side chains here. Don't know what that's doing there. <laughs> um, because some of these are hydrophobic, like ethane. Some are hydrophilic, like water. Some are negatively charged, like chloride. Some are positively charged like sodium. Uh, the best thing that CBM has ever come up with is this protein folding kit, the acid starter kit. It can fold proteins following basic principles of chemistry. We have other protein models, very schematic models of an enzyme, showing substrates that bind, showing inhibitors that block the binding. These are competitive inhibitors. the wrong one. This is a competitive inhibitor. This is a non-competitive inhibitor because it binds somewhere else on the protein but alters the active site so the substrate no longer binds. This is the magnetic DNA kit. Uh, we have since produced uh, we've since produced more schematic Home models of DNA that are mine. Uh, we're in the process of modifying that kit so that it's not only anatomically accurate, but it unwinds mm -hmm. like this. So now we'll be able to do replication with this. And finally, we do DNA as uh, as information with these gene strips. Uh, the beta globin gene. Kids can begin to do bioinformatics, looking at sequences of this sort. So now we're moving into new stuff. Um, we have here what we call the Flow of Genetic Information Kit. Three different placemats in which we do DNA replication. So the DNA is actually this, again, a schematic foam DNA that gets separated and then replicated with these DNA polymerases here. In the middle placemat we take that DNA and we make messenger RNA uh, with RNA polymerase. This messenger RNA then gets trans transferred to the ribosome in the third placemat and then we decode the mRNA sequence into proteins using tRNAs that bring individual amino acids into the ribosome. So we're very, very excited to see teachers beginning to use this in the classroom. All right, and then we're gonna, th then we have up here a DNA, I'm sorry, a David Goodsell cellular landscape. Uh, I really think that those kinds of images need to be in, in classrooms all across the country because it's showing students a view of the inside of a cell that we've never shown them before. So, I wish we had time to go through that landscape. But backing up here, this is our latest project. Uh, this ultimately, all of these materials here lead into a synapse construction kit here in which students will be modeling the presynaptic cell, the postsynaptic cell, and they'll be modeling how the action potential is created. Now the action potential, let me go down here, the action potential created up here slams into the end of the presynaptic cell. This is a voltage-activated calcium channel. 
which opens, the calcium comes in, and the calcium sensor interacts with these snap and snare proteins, which causes this vesicle filled with neurotransmitter to fuse with this membrane. I'm not going to go through that, but this neurotransmitter gets released into the synapse. It binds to a uh, receptor here and opens a, a chloride channel. And that then stimulates uh, the generation of the action potential here. When you're all done with this, we can back up and look at look at real 3D printed models of the proteins that are shown schematically here. So this is the potassium channel with the uh, scorpion toxin uh, docked onto the surface of that. Likewise, we can look at receptors for the acetylcholine. Not sure what that model's doing there. <laughs> but let me, let, let me, uh, all right, so one, one next to the last thing. Over here we have a collection of drugs, both prescription drugs and drugs of abuse. Once the students understand how this neural signaling works, those drugs interfere with different steps involved in this molecular process of, of nerve impulse. Um, what's the word? Transmission, I guess. So, I missed one thing. We come back here. You don't just jump into a synapse. You start with a physical model of a phospholipid using the Molymod kit. We're developing a inexpensive foam version of that. So these are the three atoms of glycerol with the two fatty acid tails and then the modification of the third carbon here. So once kids get a sense for this as the chemical structure of a phosphoglyceride, we then introduce them to simpler, even simpler representations of this from here to here. So this now is a, the same phospholipid that we see here. But now there's this great activity in which kids take individual phospholipids, put them in a beaker of water, mm -hmm. and then arrange them how they think they would orient themselves, knowing that the yellow tails are hydrophobic. So the kids will put all those tails up out of the water. And then you tell them that no, all of the, all these phospholipids have to be submerged. So then they'll do this, which makes sense at first, because now the phospho groups exposed to water, the lipid tails are not. But there's actually water inside there. So when you point out that there's water inside there, they will eventually form this, which is the lipid bilayer. So this is where membranes come from. And once the kids have discovered this for themselves, you can then give them pieces of membrane like this. And then, then you can start talking about membranes and the need for proteins and membranes to pass ions and nutrients in and out of cells. So then you're ready to go from here into a synapse kit. So, that's, that's the whole table, a whole set of models that are kind of connected to one another.